In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up for Android development on a Mac. If you don't have a Mac and are planning to build Android apps on a Windows machine, skip ahead to the next video. So first off, you need something called the Java Development Kit. The Java Development Kit includes things like the Java Runtime Environment and the Java Compiler. So how do we check if we've already got it? Click on Search and open your, open your terminal. From there, just type Java space dash version. Now, if you've already got Java installed and your version number will pop up here and we're looking for something 1.8 or higher. So I've got 1.8.0 underscore 77, and that's fine. If you don't have the Java development environment installed, you will see a different message. You will see something like this, no Java runtime present requesting install. If you don't have the Java development environment installed or you don't have at least version 1.8, then type in download Java development kit into Google and head to the Oracle website. On the Oracle website, you should see the latest Java development kit available for download. So just click accept license agreement and then over here, download the GMG. Once you've downloaded the DMG, just double click on the um, icons and go through the regular standard install process. After you've successfully installed the Java development kit, let's check the terminal one more time to see if we've got the correct version. So search for terminal and then type in Java hyphen version and just make sure it says at least 1.8 on here. Now it's time to install Android Studio. Let's say download Android Studio. And we're going to head to developer.android.com. And here we're going to grab Android Studio for Mac. We're going to accept the terms and conditions and download another DMG. So you open the DMG and drag it to your application folder. Then simply fire up Android Studio. It's a big program, so if you've got an older computer, it might take a while until it fires up. You might also see a prompt like this. So just select, I do not have a previous version of Android Studio and I do not want to import my settings. And after it's booted up, you'll be dropped off at this welcome screen. The first thing you actually wanna do after you've just downloaded Android Studio is you want to click configure and you want to click check for updates because chances are there's probably some updates uh, that you can download and install. Great, now that we've installed Android Studio, if you have a physical device, now's the time that we configure it so that we can install our apps on it. So go to your settings in your phone and you probably have to scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says about or about phone and there you have to look for something called a build number. So on this HTC, it's under software information, then more, and there it's buried as a, a line item. You click on that seven times. So tap on it seven times, and after a while you start getting these messages. You are X steps away from being a developer. After you tap it seven times, you become part of the secret club, and a secret menu appears that was previously hidden. So under your settings, you should now see something called developer options. And you click on that, and there you see a thing called USB debugging. So you wanna make sure you enable that because that option is crucial for making sure your phone is being recognized when you plug it into your computer. So for comparison, here's a Nexus device. And there's, again, there's the about phone section that's organized slightly differently. And the build numbers there in the menu. You just have to hunt around for it depending on what kind of phone you've got. After you have enabled developer mode on your phone or tablet, find your USB cables. Now mind you, try to find some quality ones, either the ones that came with the device when you bought it or some good ones that you got off Amazon. Finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open Android Studio and start a new project just to check everything is working to make sure that our phone is being recognized by the computer. So just start a new project in Android Studio 
and just click next a couple of times in the wizard to start a, a blank project here and just wait for Android Studio to create the project. After Android Studio finishes building the project, it should drop you off on a screen like this. Now click the Android monitor down here and it will open up this little tab and initialize the so-called Android debug bridge. And this is responsible for talking to your device. Now plug in your Android device into your computer and wait for a bit. And what should happen is it should show up here and you should see log messages starting to scroll through the log cat. Now, if you don't see that, then maybe you haven't enabled USB debugging on your device. So double check that. The easiest way to check that is to look at the status bar on your Android device and look for the Android shape debugging symbol, or you've got a bad or damaged cable. So in my case, you can see that it connected, but then it disconnected right away. And that's because the cable that I've used is not very good and it's got a bit of a loose connection. So I hope you got everything working and you managed to iron out any issues that you encountered. In the next lesson, we're going to configure Android Studio so that it's a bit more user-friendly and speeds up our workflow.